What's going on guys, it's Dill here from Demsec and today I'm excited. And that's because we're trying a different type of video today. And what we're gonna be trying, well, hopefully succeeding at, is improving my home network a little bit. And the main problem we've been having is with Wi-Fi. And let me just show you. So this device here is, you know, everyone knows what it is. It's a router, it's what you get from your ISP and you can see my ISP here, so you know, with Plusnet. Surprisingly not as bad as you'd think. But this flat is where Wi-Fi comes to die. And the reason for that is, is like, just, just a second, can you? That's, that's like solid concrete. And anyone who knows anything about radio is, it doesn't like going through solid concrete, especially 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. So as you can see here, we've got a little TP-Link device and we're using this as a bit of a Wi-Fi repeater. And the reason why we do that is because in the living room, you get no Wi-Fi signal whatsoever. So that just kind of bridges the gap between the router, the kitchen, and the living room. And then behind my monitors here, um, I don't know if you can see it, just, just here, I've got another TP-Link device. And this TP-Link device essentially just services my room and gives me 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz in my room. And I'm sure I've found a better solution. And the solution which I'm looking at is one of these bad boys. So Ubiquity didn't send me this. I mean... They may have, but they didn't ask me to do a video about it. This is, this is mine, I've paid for this, and it's because I've used Ubiquiti gear before. I have a Ubiquiti Edge Router Lite, and that thing has been running absolutely non-stop for five, six years, and has not missed a beat. I don't have that router here, that's back um, at my parents' house, essentially. Um, so, let's crack it open. So in the box, we get the device itself, which is, you know, it's quite an attractive little unit. Like, it's quite small, it's quite sleek, it's, it's made out of plastic, but it is, um, like, fairly, fairly well built. Uh, we get a power cable, and this little thing. So what I have in my hands here is a PoE injector, and PoE is power over ethernet. So what that essentially means, you can see here, we've got a port that's labeled LAN, and this one we plug essentially into our existing router. And this one goes out to the access point. So let's take a quick look at the access point. So on the back of the device, underneath, all we have is one ethernet port. There's nowhere to plug in power. So that's essentially what power over ethernet is. It sends, it sends the data and the power over the line at the same time using one cable. So if I was wanting to mount this on the ceiling, all I have to worry about is running one single cable. So we're back down here by the router, and getting this set up from like a hardware perspective is so, so easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my PoE injector, and where the LAN port is, I'm going to plug in one Ethernet cable, and that's going to go into the back of the router. And then out of the PoE port, I've got another Ethernet cable, I'm going to plug that in there, and that's going to go into the back of the access point. I'm just going to set this down out of frame here. And then all that's left to do is take the power cable, plug it into the PoE injector, and then plug that into power. So this thing worried me at first when I initially powered it up. Um, but all you have to do is just wait a little bit and it'll start blinking like that. And when it's blinking like that, it means it hasn't been adopted by a controller. And we've not, we've not spoke about controllers yet, but let's head over to the computer and go through configuring this thing. So to actually get the controller software, if you've got one of these devices, I'll put the link down in the description, but this isn't one of those videos that you kind of follow along with unless you've actually uh, gone out there and grabbed one of these, but um, you just get it from here, it's this link here. I've already started it up and I've gone to devices here and we see that there's one device pending adoption. So I'm gonna click adopt. So what's happening now is it says provisioning and essentially what that means is when I installed the controller software I set a default SSID and password. So just by connecting that device I've been able to see it, hit one button and it's going ahead and configuring it. So if you had multiple of these and because it is like an enterprise grade Wi-Fi device you could easily just expand your net network by just plugging them in. So we see here now that it's connected. So what, what does that mean for us? So if we go to users, there's no one connected to it, nothing like that. 
I'm going to change the alias to um, unify uh, demsec unify one. Just you know, why not? So you have settings here for configuring the radios. So it's all on auto auto at the moment, and the device does a really good job of automatically picking the least populated channels. So if we go to details, we actually have this thing here, and I'm not going to run it right now because it takes quite a while to run, but it actually does like detailed RF analysis, so like radio frequency analysis to base off which channel it should be on, whether it should move channel based on interference. So you can see, as I mentioned before, I've gone to the configuration tab in WLANs, and it's already got the default um, SSID which I set up. Uh, we've got network and it's all DHCP. Like, this is probably the easiest access point I've ever had to set up. So I've just noticed at the top here, what I'm going to do is just hit upgrade and uh, confirm. Make sure we're running the latest firmware on it. Always a good idea. So while that's upgrading, and it is taking a little while, and, uh, you know, as soon as I start talking, it's uh, finished upgrading, but I want to make a point here. So the little device which we have repeating Wi-Fi is using WDS, and those who've played with Wi-Fi know that that stands for Wireless Distributed System. And what it allows you to do is have a, a Wi-Fi device connect and be a client and also then rebroadcast that SSID. Which sounds really cool, but it's got this one caveat but where you essentially lose half of the bandwidth every time you do that because it's having to basically store and forward. It's having to um, act as an access point, take me trying to go to google.com, that hits the small TP link and then it bounces it across to the main access point. Unify on the other hand, allow you to do a very similar thing but they call it wireless uplink and it uses their own proprietary technology and you know, proprietary kind of sucks but it's, if it works I'll, I'll accept it. And when they do wireless provisioning, so if I go and get another one of these, um, it essentially allows you to use one as a wireless uplink to another unified device and you don't lose near as much bandwidth. I'm, I won't go on, go on and say that you don't lose any bandwidth, but compared to WDS, it is considerably better. So what I'm going to do now, and uh, I'm kind of worried about this, I'm going to log into my Plusnet router and disable its built-in Wi-Fi and I'm going to turn off all the other access points so we're just using the Unify access point and we're going to run some tests. So I've had to go to advanced settings and then wireless and this is where we're going to be able to turn stuff off. So we're going to disable the Wi-Fi, hit apply. And then we're going to go to 5 gigahertz and also turn it off. And now we've got the main router Wi-Fi turned off. We need to turn off all these extenders I have in place. So let's turn off this one. It's got a nice switch on the side for doing that. So that one's turned off. And then we need to uh, unplug this little one. So now we have all the other access points turned off apart from the one that's down there. Let's have a quick look at Wi-Fi analyzer just to make sure that we only have one access point being broadcasted. So you can see there, we only have that one big green access point in the middle called Demsec, and it's so strong because we're right next to it. So we're connected to it right now, as you can see in the top corner right there, I'm on Wi-Fi. So let's just run a speed test. So we get 70 down and about 30 up here on internet, so that's pretty goddamn close to full speed there. And we only tend to actually get 20, we actually meant to get 30, but I never see more than 20, so... We're getting full speeds right next to it, as you'd expect. So we've moved a little bit further away, we're now in the kitchen. So uh, we're pretty much on the same signal we were on. Let's have a look at the actual uh, Wi-Fi analyzer graph. Let that update. So I don't know if you remember, the, the little green one there was only just slightly higher. So we've not really lost much signal here and we didn't tend to because there's no like total massive walls in the way. So let's just do another te speed test, test again. Let's see what we get. So we're getting pretty much identical speeds down so far to what we're getting right next to it. More importantly for me, let's make sure the upload speed is exactly the same. So we've not lost anything going, you know, a few meters and, you know, kind of expected that. 
So let's now go to the worst part in the flat for Wi-Fi. So this is like notorious for being the worst place in the flat for Wi-Fi. So let's, let's see how it does. So if you remember the little green one there, that's our network. So we've not actually physically moved that far. It's just these walls and we've lost quite a bit of signal. As you can see there, it's starting to go up a little bit, but more importantly, what speeds do we get? And we've lost a little bit of speed, which we'd expect, but it's very, very, very usable at this range. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's double check upload. And we still get full upload speed. And we'd expect that because even at this range, we should be able to still get pretty much full speed. So we've in here, we got literally no signal without that repeater on the other side of the wall. So we're definitely looking up here. Right, so you can kind of see my flatmate in the corner there. And uh, the reason why Wi-Fi is so critical in this room is because I'm kind of lopsided here, but you can see he's got his PS4 just there and i thought the ps4 would have pretty good built-in wi-fi but i think it is just this room that's not fantastic so let, let's see how this does we're just going to do a speed test on the ps4 and in here before we put that little repeater in it just did not connect in here or if it did it was unusable and it dropped out mm -hmm. so he's connecting to the network obtaining ip address and that's a lot of successfuls <laughs> Quickest it's done it as well. Checking download speed. Let's see what it gets. This this PS4 tends to get lower than what you actually get on your phone, but as long as it's at a usable level. So, ah, I think a good test right now would be to try and fire up a Netflix video because that kind of shows it. So the speeds there weren't fantastic, but I think this kind of lies about the speeds because it says they're really low and then just um. Yeah, everything tends to work, so keep going. Won't be able to play too much of this, because otherwise I'll get copyright prison. I don't want copyright prison. I think it's 30 seconds, is it? So yeah, try and seek a random point let's see how long it takes to buffer and that's pretty goddamn good i'm pretty happy with that yep 100 hd everything so it's safe to say i am very happy with how this has come out i was a bit kind of dubious about spending like this kind of money that on just a separate access point but after seeing those results those other wi-fi devices can stay stay turned off i'm so happy with it Thank you for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I put a fair bit of effort into it and just let me know what you think. I'm, I'm trying loads of different things and I genuinely want to know what you think about it. That being said, if you guys have had any experience with these devices, leave leave a message down below in the comments and I, I read every comment, no word of a lie. If you fancy supporting the channel, there's a few ways you can do that now. The easiest of course is to drop a subscription down below and click on the bell so you get notifications every time that we post a video. If you feel like being stupidly generous, head over to the Patreon page, you'll be able to see the end card at, you know, the end of the video. But Click on that if you do feel like donating anything. Everything goes back into the videos. Me and Aaron do not take a cut out of it. All the money goes back into making these videos. That being said, hope you enjoyed, guys, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.